Well, it seems that every February, Adobe does a, a kind of a small dot update to, uh, to Lightroom and a lot of other apps as well. And this February is no different. Uh, my name is Matt Klaskowski. We're just going to take a, a quick look. There's not too many new things. And really, one of them is more, one of them is, is a little bit of demonstration. And it's, it's a lot of me talking about it. So if, if you want the cliff notes, just watch the video. It's, it's going to take a few minutes, but it really needs to be talked about because I think it's important to, to get the, to, to understand who it's meant. Okay. So as we look at the, uh, the, the, the pop-up screen here that will launch after you've updated. And if you haven't updated, just go to your Adobe creative cloud updater app. Um, if you don't see a Lightroom update in there, which I know sometimes it takes a while, give it a couple hours or try restarting your computer. Sometimes they roll it out. Sometimes a quick computer restart will do it just to kind of reset its memory inside of there. And you'll want to make sure if you go to your about Lightroom, you'll want to make sure that you are using 8.2. That is the latest release that I'm talking about here. If yours doesn't say 8.2, you will not have these features. All right. So, uh, and of course, obviously this is for the, uh, the creative cloud, uh, subscriber plan as well. Okay. Um, so the first one enhanced details, I'm going to read this because you're going to start falling asleep as I do it. Um, experience on demand, enhanced demosaic quality for bare and X trans raw files, more accurate rendition of fine details and reduction of, uh, patterns, false colors. Just go to photo drop, blah, blah, blah. Get there. So if guys, if none of that makes sense to you, this feature probably isn't for you. It's really not for me. In fact, this is an update and I understand lots of people want this stuff. Neither one of these features really does anything for me personally, but there are other people that use Lightroom. So I get it. So here's the deal. This is, I'm going to run through, I'm going to run it through on this photo here. If you go to the photo menu, come down here to enhance details. Um, it's going to give you a, uh, it's going to give you kind of a few seconds here and it's going to build a preview. And then it actually lets you interact with the preview. It kind of tells you a little bit about what it does inside of here. It's going to create a separate DNG file. Um, but I'm going to zoom into an area I know had some problems. So the way that this little preview works is if you click, you see down here it says enhanced. If I click, I see non-enhanced. And if I let go, I see enhanced. Non-enhanced. Non-enhanced. So do you see the little artifacting that appears right up near my cursor? That's the kind of stuff this is geared for. Okay. It's geared for photos that have some visible artifacting before they got into this, this spot, um, due to the way that whatever, however they were rendered, however, their raw files that come out of the camera and all that stuff, some have artifacting. So you can go in there and this will, this will smooth some of that stuff out. Um, I can tell you from experience and you will see it in a second the 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 preview that we see here it's never as good once i do it so the preview usually just seems to be better than than it actually than i you know the result ever is um just something that i've noticed inside of here and if you're not seeing a difference here guys don't do it it's not going to help your photo at all all right so let's click uh let's click cancel because i already already did this so the original photo if i go look at that same area here and by the way you this is make no mistake this is for pixel peepers. Okay. This is for pixel peepers only. You will never see it. When we go look at our photo regular on screen, when I just fit my photo to the screen, you'll never see this stuff. I've got to go to the navigator and I've got to go zoom myself into almost 800% before I can see that artifact. And I'll even go down to 400%. Yeah. I can kind of see a little bit of it here at 400%. I guarantee you I won't see it at 200 don't see anything at 200. So this is for pixel peepers. Just keep that in mind. So that's the artifact thing I was talking about. And when we go to the, uh, the, the fixed version here, the enhanced version, I should call it. And, uh, and we take a look. So this is the enhanced version. This is the non-enhanced version. Enhanced, non-enhanced. I definitely see more of a glow around the edges in the non-enhanced then I do the enhance. I definitely see less artifacting in the enhanced version than I do the non-enhanced. And keep in mind at the same time too, when we were in that dialog box, we were probably zoomed out to about 400. That dialog box wasn't zoomed into 800. All right. So if I, if I kind of position these in the same place, the results, yeah, there's the non-enhanced version. Definitely see some artifacting there. 
There's the enhanced version. That artifacting is definitely not as prominent around some of those areas. Okay. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about. So who is this for? This is for people that see this stuff. Okay. You have, you have a refined eye and you pixel peep and you see this stuff. Who should really use it? People that care about that kind of stuff, people that are going to pixel peep regardless. And then honestly, if you know, lots of details in photos, lots of contrasty edges, bright sky, contrasty edge. And then to me, the last thing is going to be if you're printing large, if you're not printing large, I, I would never even really bother with this again, give it a try. Your own results may vary, but this is just my personal opinion. If you're not printing large and I mean 20 by 30, maybe larger than that, um, I wouldn't worry about this stuff. Okay. So for me personally, I do print big sometimes. I'm still, I think 99.9999% of my photos will never, ever have this feature used. If I see a problem on a specific photo, um, I might give it a try to see if it helps. Okay. The, another place here, I'm going to show you really quick. I'll run through a couple other photos here, enhanced details on this one. One of the places where you will see it a lot is little lights that are way, way off in the distance. And they'll tend to look like little, they'll tend to look like little balls, little glowing balls off in the distance. In the non-enhanced version, you see they kind of even get a softer stair-stepped edge. And then once it's enhanced, kind of firms up that edge a little bit, sometimes adds a little bit more color to those, uh, those little areas. I know there was another one here, last one that I'll do. Again, you're gonna see this in lights, um, lights on the buildings, it tends to happen too, but the place I saw it the most is going to be bright lights. I know down here in this parking garage, it's so hard to move around the photo when I'm zoomed this far in. So let's see here. Come on. Where the heck is it? I know they're somewhere. There we go. Lights. All right. So there is the enhanced version, not enhanced. Enhanced. So you see they, they tend to get a little bit more stair stepping and artifacting and they tend to glow a little bit more in the non-enhanced than the enhanced version. So those are places that I personally have found that you'll start to see that stuff, okay? Uh, next thing is uh, improved tethering support. If you come up here to the file menu, you will notice there is only one place for tethered capture now. It, for a brief time, we had two, uh, because in, in a previous update, they really did some performance changes for Canon cameras. Um, and now, and this is one of the nice things about not having a yearly upgrade is, you know, you get the features as they come out. So, so now that the Nikon is available, um, you're going to have increased, increased performance for both Canon and Nikon. Best thing you can do folks, if you're wondering what cameras work for this, Google, what cameras can I tether with inside of Lightroom? And you will get to Adobe's page that shows you, um, all of the, all of the tether support for your cameras. But right now I believe the, the enhanced performance is mostly limited to the Nikon and Canon side, but of course, uh, there's little enhancements and features added in there as well in case you do tether. Other than your normal uh, raw updates for different new raw formats and lens profiles and whatnot, the only other thing that you're going to see is if you are a Lightroom CC user, which is the cloud-based version of Lightroom, which I am not, so uh, I don't use this, but uh, if you head up here to the photo menu, you scroll down there to photo merge, you will see it now has all of your merge options that we have inside of Lightroom Classic CC. So you can do your HDR, your Pano, and your HDR Pano Merge. Okay, folks, hope this uh, kind of helped give you a quick update as to what is new. Make sure you go to your Creative Cloud little updater thing there and uh, update any uh, programs that you have. And of course, again, I mentioned it earlier, but restart if you don't see it. If you're not seeing the update available, just uh, just maybe even restart the app or restart your computer. Also, uh, if you do enjoy these videos, I just ask one huge favor, and that is uh, just subscribe or follow. So if you're here on uh, YouTube, and uh, you can obviously subscribe, and there's also a place to get notifications. Same thing on Facebook. Just like the page, and then there's also a way to get notifications there as well.